Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, October 19th, 2017, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Uh, I wasn't on here yesterday. I had to go to the doctor. Um, as you know, I've been having a lot of issues with my liver, my gastrointestinal issues. Anyway, uh, they've been getting worse, and... Uh, I've, um, I've had a lot of uh, skipping of my heart, you know, like beats, extra beats. So I went to my cardiologist yesterday, and he did a cardiogram, and it showed the extra beats. And he said that the beats are coming from the upper chamber of the heart, the top of the heart. So he, he says it's not anything dangerous. Um, and he didn't prescribe anything for me, except he told me I need to lose weight because um, the liver is overloaded. It's got fat in the liver. And uh, every time I eat, um, there's chaos in my stomach. And, um, you know, I, I know that the Father wants me to, to, uh, to have victory over this, because two days ago, I went to, to, into the deli to get his, uh, uh, my lunch, and uh, the bill came to 777, and I thought that was very, very strange. And um, I knew that was a message from the Lord. So I looked it up in the Strong's, in the Greek, and lo and behold, it means no eating. So um, the Father is chastising me, does not want me to eat. He wants me to fast. And I believe that the fasting will help me get this weight off and get the fat out of the liver and uh, stabilize my enzymes and all that. So if you would kindly just say a prayer for me to help me to fast, because um, this is what the Father wants for me. Um, like I said, there are major, major familiar glutton spirits in my family humongous and uh, they've been following me all my life I've been digging my heels in since I was 13 14 years old I felt it following me so um, if you can just kindly just add me to your prayer list uh, and ask the Lord to help me to fast I would appreciate that thank you so I have um, a couple of devotionals for you today, but first I would like to see the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Father, for another day. Thank you for second chances. Thank you for always giving us the message on what we should do. Um, Father, I want to protect the temple that these demons are hammering at me. I pray to you, Father, to help me throw off these demons. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, this is called Trust Only in God. And the reading is from Proverbs 18.10. And it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The last 20 years have seen Americans lose a lot of money. There were the bankruptcies of companies like Enron and WorldCom, in which investors and employees lost out, the bursting of the dot-com bubble in 2000, and the fiasco of the housing bubble in 2008, which led to the economic recession. Trillions of dollars of wealth have evaporated in these and other financial catastrophes. Tragic as these losses have been, to those directly affected, they should come as no surprise to anyone. Everything man builds on earth is constructed with hands 
tainted by sin. Like building a house on a foundation made with cheap cement instead of certified concrete. Any tremor will likely bring it crashing down. Quotes, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unquote. From Psalm 127. 1. Everything in this world is destined to pass away. We see that now. We see it. Everything's burning up. Fires everywhere. Sinkholes opening up. Buildings coming down. Animal die off. <laughs> Disease spreading. Everything in this world is destined to pass away, either now or in the future. The Bible reminds us that only the truth of God's word will endure forever. Our challenge is to invest in this world only what we can afford to lose in this world. That means entrusting our salvation and peace of mind to no one except God. Yeah, and that includes possessions, and that includes people, and uh, it's very, very hard to separate yourself from people. Um, humans get attached, you know, and um, they get attached because there's a lack of closeness, personal closeness, with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that you're not to love someone. And that if you lose them, you're not going to grieve. But I'm saying that when you're walking with the Lord, it puts things in in perspective. You know the reason why these things happen. Because we are in a fallen world and there is death. And there's destruction and there's evil. And now we're in a time where it's all going to end. But this hope, you know, our blessed hope is going to make everything new again, including our bodies, and reunite us with the people that we love. So we need to focus on that. And this one is, second one is called Peter. And the reading is from Luke 31, 32. And it says, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Thank God for Peter, the apostle of failure. Though he stumbled, he didn't stay down. And though he sinned, he didn't wallow in his guilt. Ed infantum, but repented, stood to his feet and went forward to change the world for Christ. Proverbs 24, 16 must have been Peter's life verse, quotes, A righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by the calamity. Isn't that true? That, <clears throat> I've said this in other videos, that other Christians are our greatest critics, that when we fall on our face, there's no reprieve. We're blackened. We're blacklisted. Why is that? How could that be? That there's less forgiveness within the body of Christ for a Christian who stumbles or maybe says the wrong word or makes a mistake. Um, and, then, and then people start jumping on that person. Um and tries to destroy them how is that more that happens more in the body of christ than it does outside the body of christ I've, it's very it's very hard i mean if we're all on the same side you know we all love christ we all can't wait for him to come why does that happen um or perhaps psalm 37 24 quotes though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Yeah, because when Christians, you know, might veer off the wrong direction or they might, you know, misstep. Um, thing is, is on YouTube, it's all public, you know. 
people are viewing what you do, especially, you know, if you get on here all the time, you're under a microscope. But if you, the Lord knows your heart, you know, and if he knows if you make a mistake, he's just going to, he's going to turn that mistake around into something that gives him glory and you're going to move forward. Um, have you stumbled? Have you failed? Have you fallen on your face lately? Don't just lie there. Get up. There were no sinless Bible heroes except Jesus himself. Imagine that. Imagine that. All the people that we refer to who were given revelation in the Bible that we listen to, that we follow, they all made mistakes and fell on their face. <clears throat> Even the greatest heroes of the faith had moments of mistakes, missteps, and miserable failures. But they didn't give up. And neither must you get back on your feet, dust yourself off, and go forward for Christ. Absolutely. Keep winning souls. Keep putting out the gospel of Jesus Christ in. Let the Lord take it where he wants it to go. And V. Raymond Edmund quotes, Never doubt the dark what God told you in the light. Yeah. <laughs> say, say, what God, say what God gives you, you know. Uh, reveal what God does. You know, people, people uh, that don't know the Lord and how he works will criticize the Christian. I mean, I've been on here and uh, the Lord has broken the veil during my um, my devotional time. I mean, one time he just, he turned my face totally pink, but everything around me was the same. And um, I took a lot of heat for that. And um, I started crying. I mean, it, you know, it was like, the Lord tests you, you know, he'll humiliate you publicly to see what you're made of, you know. And then um, just uh, during the summer, I talked about the rapture and he turned me completely white as if I was in glory. And the plants on the side of me were normal color. And, um, it, you know, he's he broke light bulbs over my head while I was, um, you know, in uh, recording on the devotional. Um, when I t told him when I, this was last, last year, I said, you know, do, do, father, should I renew my post office box for my business? And then when I got into the post office to put the key in there, he completely crushed the tips of my keys and broke them, broke them, broke the tips off and bent them. I mean, I could never do this. Look at that. Look at how much he chewed off that end of that, uh, these these things yeah the father breaks the veil on me all right and if he doesn't break the veil on you it doesn't mean that I'm um when I come on here and I tell you this stuff that I'm making it up it just means that maybe you don't know him or maybe he hasn't revealed himself to you so you need to get into prayer a little bit more and you need to read your Bible a little bit more and you need to converse with him you need to talk to him the way I'm talking to you in order to get the back and forth with the father. You know, like I said the other day, I went to the deli and the, and the, and the bill came to 777. That's strange. I said, I know that's God's number. I looked it up. And what was I doing? I was giving them money for a sandwich and the meaning was don't eat. Stop eating. Okay. Fast. Can't get any clearer than that. So, uh, <laughs> when you belong to the Father, it's it's a it's such an exciting journey every day, every day. You'll never be bored being a true Christian. Never. It's never ritualistic like religion. Okay, you you not you don't spend your days sitting, kneeling, and standing, and being quiet like you're at a funeral. You know, you life is far from that when you're connected to Christ. 
So if you don't know Christ, or if you haven't given your life to Christ, it would be a good time now because look at the world. Look at what's happening, people. You know, there was those fires in um, California. There were fires that started in five different locations. And uh, trees were standing and the houses were disintegrated. That was not a normal outdoor fire. And the same thing happened in Portugal. Five separate fires. I watched a video and the, on, and the man they were interviewing said there were five separate fires. I thought that was, that really struck home with me when he said five because I remembered that I just watched a video that, that um, proclaimed that the California fires, there were five separate fires that were going at the same time. And it wasn't that one fire spread to five different locations. They were five separate fires. And the things that were burning, burned in the same fashion. It wasn't a normal um, outdoor fire. By the way, the California fires, just to mention this, that... Um, Charles Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts characters, his wife evacuated in California, but the house burned completely down. So all his, everything that he did that he had in his house, all his memorabilia is all burned up. It's, not that it means anything, but I just thought I'd say it because I read it. Um, Everything's going to burn up. This is what the Father says in, in that devotional. Everything is going to pass away. Everything. Everything's coming down. Getting ready for the new millennium. But before the millennium, we have to go through the tribulation, people. The tribulation is, is dealing with Israel. And uh, the church is going to be gone. You don't want to be here for that. It's, it's going to be like um, tribulation like never, ever before on this earth. Never before in history of man. Anything like it. So I'm going to put the salvation um, video right behind this one. So don't click off. If you haven't come to Christ, follow along with the video. Okay? Jesus loves you people. I love you. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. He's just, he's giving us so much time and warnings. All these things that we see are warnings. Everything in the sky, the crazy red suns and all this hor horrible weather, violent weather, violent killings and shit. These are all warnings, people. Get on the ark, okay? Give your life to Jesus. Follow along. God bless. <laughs>